And welcome back to Community Viewpoint. I'm John Pollock, your host for the second segment. And um, we will be talking about something that's staring me in the face, uh, 65 years old. We're going to be talking about Medicare. And we have with us uh, this afternoon Sandy Jennings, who is the Medicare ship counselor. Now, um, I don't see any ships over here in, in Pahrump, so uh, uh, Sandy, what does SHIP stand for? SHIP stands for a State Health Insurance Assistance Program for our uh, beneficiaries. I, I knew that, but so let, we'll start out on a light note. Okay. Um, Medicare. Uh, I'm almost ready for it. I will be 65, and um, what does it do for me? What, do you, what kind of services do you have? For the Medicare, or for what I do, for well, what I do specifically. Let's let's go with you do uh, specifically. Well, I'm a volunteer and counselor here for Nye County, okay. and what I do is I try to when beneficiaries contact me or if I have some outreach uh, events that I go to to let them know that I'm here to help them sign up for Medicare, Social Security, um, help them give them extra help as the income based on their Part B premium, which is a premium that comes out for your doctors each month out of your Social Security. Uh, also, your prescription drug costs, um, which can be enormous sometimes. Yes. And I'm here to help you out and do applications if necessary to get you extra help and to try and give you as much information as I can. So I've known you for a few years. I've been waiting to talk to you until you know, and we're just about ready to talk. Mm. <laughs> but, um, so what, what do you do with the, the Medicare? If, if I needed you, you I um, have an appointment with you, sit down with you. Yes. And you meet, where do you meet? I meet, I, I'm only allowed to meet in public places here in town, like the library, the senior center, um, to discuss anything with you. Most of those two uh, uh, locations are mainly, everyone knows where those are, the senior center and the library. Um, and I'll go and we'll just sit down and discuss what your options are and uh, um, what your income is, and then go through everything that you need to do to answer the questions that you need to make it more easy to apply. And some people who are already on Medicare who need extra help or oh. need extra questions done, you know, I'm there. I'm here in town. I live here in town. And um, I've been doing this for about four years. Okay. So um, I try to help out as much as I can. So I've uh, downloaded some of the paperwork here, mm -hmm. as you can see. And some of it is confusing. And if you go to different health care people, they make it even more confusing for you also. So that's why we need a... Uh, someone uh, to help us go through the rigmarole uh, type or plan was A, B, C, and D we have? Well, A is, of course, hospital. B is your doctors. C is a Medigap policy, which is a uh, private insurance company that you can purchase um, if you don't join an Advantage plan. And D, of course, is your prescription drug plan. D is, okay. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm going to be 65, let's say, the beginning of the year. Uh, I'm going to... Uh, start in with uh, Medicare, uh, what would I have to do? do? Would I get a free Medicare or does it cost me? It costs, it costs money, it does. Um, our A usually is free, that's the hospitalization, and that usually is, the reason it's free is because our work history, if you have a certain amount of credits throughout your work history, which is about 39 credits, um, that would be free. If, it's, if you don't have that many credits, then you'll have to pay a small premium, but in most cases it's free. B is our doctors, and that's where the $105 comes out of our Social Security uh, to pay for our doctors. That's whether I want to or not. If I'm Essentially, going. yes, unless okay. you have other coverage, like maybe a, a former employer, a retirement, okay. where they would pay for that, and that would be considered credible coverage, and that could be opt-out in, in some cases. Um, but Or VA, if you're, if you're retired military, that's usually where you wouldn't have to pay for that. Right. Uh, <clears throat> That's retired uh, military. Now, right. if you're uh, just a veteran and have no, or have all your limbs and have your mental capacity, uh, you have to pay co-pays and things like Correct. that. Correct. It's like having a, like a regular insurance with a, a health care person with a co-pay. Correct. Uh, now, if, if I came back, uh, God forbid, and I had some missing limbs or there's some issues I had, I, I would have that provided to me for free by the VA but in most cases they sometimes it depends on your service record if you're if you are retired yes they will cover you yes you know that's what they're supposed to do if you don't have a full retirement you know uh, 
time with the military, you know, partial. Um, it just depends on what they'll cover. You have to check with your VA to make sure what they will cover for you. Mm -hmm. And there is, you know, like I said, small copays. We even with the VA, right. it just depends. Um, that's why, um, in some cases, a lot of uh, beneficiaries I have, they say I have VA. Well, that's wonderful because they've always told us you're covered for life. But with so many things happening in the world nowadays, sometimes the VA, you don't know if the VA is going to drop you. And if you don't have a Part B then if the VA drops you and you sign up for your Part B, you're penalized so much a month until you sign up again for Part B, which means that $105 could go up in premium. Yeah. Not a lot, but mm -hmm. some, you know, I mean, $105 is a lot of money in some cases for some people. But if it goes up to, you know, $140 a month because of the penalty, that's $40 more out of your pocket that right. you may not want to spend. And we have, a, when we're retired, we have limited Correct. income. We can't work overtime or Correct. to make up for that. No, we'll be on the corner with the, the cup and whatnot, <laughs> trying to make up for that. I don't want to do that no. at this late age. Um, and I was looking at the GPs, general practitioners, and we do have a whole slew of them that take Medicare. Mm -hmm. Most of the doctors here would take Medicare? Yes. What happens, and say, for instance, in your case, when you would ask, is that you're new to Medicare, and you'd have to find a doctor that is accepting assignment first. The one that I wanted does take it, so I'm, Good. Cool. I'm cool with Good. that already. And then you say, okay, now I'm, I'm beginning Medicare. You'd go in and you say, okay, I'm signed up. I want to get my, because every year new applicants are allowed, um, say, okay, I'm welcome to Medicare. And um, they'll set you up your doctor that you see, okay. make an appointment with your doctor. And he will order certain tests that will be no charge to you. Oh, that's, I just learned yes. something new. Uh -huh. Okay. And, um, and then um, every year you're entitled to you know, one free exam. You have to make sure, and when you go in, you ask them, am I going to be charged anything? You have to make sure that you don't because you don't want to be surprised and get a mm -hmm. bill for $100 or whatever. Because even with the veterans, the VA, I have to pay a copay. Correct. So that I would save money. Yes, uh, you would. I like that. Yes, you yes, would. Yes. But VA and Medicare do not work together. It's either or. Oh. So you can't say, okay, I'm on Medicare, have VA. They won't, they won't do it. I've found that out. Um, you go into the VA and you have tests done or whatever and whatever small copay you may have. It might be beneficial for you that, and then VA, of course, will will bill you or whatever your service number is. You will be able to uh, pay either zero or whatever small copay. Or if you go to Medicare, and if you have an Advantage plan, which is another little Medicare book, where you join a provider, and that's then, more money. Well, your monthly premium, depending on who you join and what plan you get, mm -hmm. could be a zero monthly premium, and then that provider, like Humana or Senior Dimensions gets their money from Medicare, right. which means that you don't have to pay anything. Or you may have a small copay of 10 or $25, whatever the provider you know, has on their records. But it's something you have to just sit down, you have to go through and discuss it with your provider, with the VA, and me. And you, <laughs> yes, that's what you're here. You're the ship captain here yes. in town. So yeah, a lot of this is confusing. I'm just now foraging through it and then I will be picking your brain when mm. it's time for okay. me to join this uh, and then you said we can also join this through the Social Security website too. Which... Yes, you can join if you are new to Medicare you can go on to socialsecurity.gov and sign up for Medicare. You can also sign up for Social Security if you've never signed up for Social Security you can do it also. Dual. They're trying to make it as easy as possible rather than calling on the phone and waiting an hour to get service. So um, I'm here with all those, those answers and if I don't know I'll find out. Mm -hmm. As you did uh, for me uh, this morning, too, mm -hmm. after we spoke. And you have the booklet here for Medicare and You 2014. And the new ones will be coming out late October for 2015. So all beneficiaries who have been on Medicare will get a new book in the mail. And for some reason, it, uh, the font is a little bit larger here. Is that for the people that are 65? <laughs> I don't know. How are it's printed? large print, folks. Yes. 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 So, uh, which is very smart, too. Uh, but mm -hmm. still doesn't help if you need... <laughs> but uh, the booklets are here. You have those. And uh, when you make an appointment with you. you Just know. call me on that number that we have, yes, mm -hmm. and I'll be happy to meet with you. Okay, so some of the questions have been answered, and I'll be sitting down with you when the time comes in a couple of months uh, to uh, uh, enroll finally for Medicare. And hopefully, if not, well, we still have three minutes. Okay get something for free, get something next to being free. <laughs> uh, inpatient, hospital care, Medicare Part A, um, 
they cover hospital services. What would be covered under that? Anything? In this book here, this Medicare and U book, it will tells tell you. It tells you, yes. Okay, because I, I downloaded that, and there's so much for me to look over now. But uh, it doesn't cover private uh, duty nursing, private rooms, unless medically necessary. There are definitely a lot of uh, um, things that you can or cannot do. Uh, so who is eligible? What does Medicare Part B cover? Uh, what's not covered? Dental? Do we have dental? No. Medicare does not cover it unless you purchase a, a separate policy through a provider. Okay. That would be an extra monthly charge through the provider. Okay, it's a good thing I took care of my teeth until mm -hmm. this, t this time. I even had two more put back in. <laughs> They're called implants, so yes. Uh, thankfully, I had insurance for most of my uh, working life, 31 years in the steel industry, and probably around eight or t uh, eight years of my 15 years out here, Wonderful. too. Wonderful. Yeah. You're lucky. Yes. So, um, no dental. Eyes? No. Well, so it, it depends. Like once a year, um, you have your eyes checked by through Medicare on your, on your Welcome to Medicare and then your wellness every year. They will, as long as you get an ophthalmologist. It's in that book, too. You have to determine between an ophthalmologist and an optometrist because one is not necessarily uh, covered by Medicare. So you have to go through a little questionnaire. You have to ask the people at the desk, this is what I need to do. How much am I going to have to pay? What is covered? Okay, you and I have a personal uh, up to, up to, uh, eye, doc yeah. eye doctor, and I'm sure that they would. I've been with them for many years, and then they'd be upfront about that. So, because uh, I know Glock, is it, is it uh, cataracts? I know a lot of uh, our seniors go through for the cataract surgeries later in life, and yeah. Medicare does cover a certain portion of that. There is a small copay, okay. but it just depends on how serious and but how involved. But you have to do your research. Yes, oh, so it's not real, real easy, but mm -mm. that's what you're here for, mm -hmm. our little ship captain here. Mm -hmm. So talk to Sandy. Uh, so you have her number. We've been flashing that on the screen off and on. So, and I'll be back. I'll see you before then, but we'll sit down and uh, we'll enroll me in a couple of three months. Uh, so I want to thank you uh, for uh, and you for watching, and we will be back next week uh, with something just as special as we had this week. Maybe not the food like we had this week earlier, but uh, we'll see you next week. So thank you, Sandy. Thank you. Thank you, Patrick, and thank you for watching.